What's up everyone? My name is Miles. If you're new to the channel, I'm a 23 year old full time Amazon seller. I've done about 1.5 million in sales the last 12 months with online arbitrage. And in this video, we're going to talk about this key to scaling your online arbitrage business. So what exactly is the key to scaling your online arbitrage business that's helped me really aggressively scale over the past year, specifically last summer and into Q4 and then continuing on from that, that would be replenishable products. Replenishable products are items that you can purchase again and again because there's what's called the compound effect, which is actually a really good book if you haven't read it. But basically the reason you're able to scale a lot quicker with replenishable products that you can purchase over and over again is because it scales a lot easier than you consistently sourcing new items, right? If you're always sourcing new items, then every single day you're back at square one in terms of purchasing power and, to, and spending power and getting these products through. But if you're focusing on more replenishable type product, which is what we're going to look at in this video, talk maybe some different Keepa charts and all like that, there's a compound effect into it. A month down the line, you're, pay you're not only finding new items, but you're also placing repurchase orders from the stuff you found today, three months down the line, and different stuff like that. So it's really easy to scale when there's stuff you can purchase again and again, because always all a game of how much money can you deploy on profitable inventory, and replenishable items are a really way to scale up your inventory, spend a lot quicker setting daily spend goals and monthly spend goals like I spent over 120 grand this month which out of 30% of I was going to be well over 30,000 profit over the next 30 to 45 days which is awesome and that's just what we're going to talk about in this video how to identify replenishable type opportunities for your online arbitrage business make sure to subscribe and let's get right into it here in my computer screen and there's a few different products we're going to look at two of which are not replenishable type opportunities, but more importantly, we're gonna dig into how I initially know that, at least during the initial buy, and then a third product where we're looking at that is totally, potentially, just based on the data, a replenishable type product that people are making money on and they're able to repurchase and everything like that. So let's dive right into it. So this first product, uh, Maybelline New York, expert eyes, oil-free eye makeup remover, you count. Okay, let's take a look at it. So uh, initially right here, we can see the buy box price is 1896. Hopping down here, we can see uh, the buy box or the person in the buy box is FBA. They only have one in stock though. There's 51 sellers down here diving into the Keepa. So right here, we can see uh, past couple days, the buy box has been 1889. Jumping over just a, uh, you know, three, four weeks ago, it was 27 as high as like 28 and everything. So that's like a $9 difference, right? That's a 33% right around that. A difference in the buy box just across a month, which is an immediate red flag on a product like this. Scrolling back uh, just three weeks after that, so like a month, uh, month and a half, two months, here we can see that it was right back down here and subsequently looking at the offer count naturally just with supply and demand with more sellers jumping on it there's initially a drop in price a big drop in price right here which probably right people buying at 27 it's a big difference between buying at, at 19 right so we can see here this drastic rise in sellers automatically shows me that this was probably bought on sale or something like that which makes it not a replenishable type of item I would assume, you know, I haven't sourced this, but just looking at the way that the the seller count's really instable, like it's shot up here after shooting down, right? We can hop back to the year chart and see that, I mean, no one was selling this back in uh, December and everything like that. So it was a really good opportunity. We can see it was at 29, January 6th, and then literally a month later, there were 41 sellers compared to four or five right here, and the price was down, right, like 10 bucks on a 30, so that would be you know right around a 30% drop once again off $30 cost about so we can see here I would assume this is not a replenishable type product just based on the instability of the offer count right because if people are making money they're gonna buy more of it and everything like that but we can see here that it's weird that there was a massive drop off here which is probably because people bought expecting it to sell at 30 right with lead time and everything like that it went down to 20 right and then the seller count dropped and subsequently the price skyrocketed back up to that like $27 mark and at a $27 mark you could be really profitable buying this for like 10 or 12 bucks or something like that but paying when it's at 19 right now if we're paying you know 10 bucks right there it's only a 22% ROI and this is a bundle so scrolling out looking over time the immediate red flags is just a lot of instability and in offer count and just on something like this where right it's a pretty low rank and it's a bundle this is probably something you get at like Walmart or something like that we can give a little 
uh, seller amp check and something like this. Yeah, okay, so it is on Walmart. Um, and that isn't also a red flag because Walmart products in general I don't like because everyone can get tax exempt on them and there's a lot of like people just like the idea of buying something like Walmart to sell. So, right, I think it was 464, so time that by two, do a little quick math that makes it like 920. So it actually is, uh, you know, and there's obviously, you know, if you didn't have sales tax involved in anything like that, assuming that was also the right product too. But at 27, that's a beautiful product and it's over 100% ROI. So it's just a different story um, and I like that. And who knows if that was actually the right product. But immediate red flags is just this rise in offer count over a short amount of time. That shows that it was probably bought on like a sale opportunity um, or something like that. So yeah, immediate red flag and why I don't think this would be a replenishable product, but uh, we can just see that over time. And hopping in the buy box statistics, we can see here, uh, we can go to uh, buy box statistics once this wants to load, cool, and see that uh, someone's been dominating it over time. And across 180 days, tons of people have gotten sales in this, same thing with the 90 days. That's what happens when so many people jump on it. Um, but this one I could tell immediately I have to keep it. This is probably not a replenishable opportunity that I would go after myself. Hopping into the next product, which is uh, glycerin, glycerin, something like that, um, 100 each, two pack, $21 buy box right here, so we'd want to pay right around like nine, preferably, that'd be a pretty good product at nine, uh, for a two pack and everything like that, buy box and 21 in stock, here, uh, looking at the three month chart, so as of February, it was at like 22, and then like over 30, uh, for a while there, and then, you notice how this offer count goes from in just a month, it goes from six, all the way up to 30, and right now it's at 35, so that was like, you know, over a month that it hasn't really changed and there's a little less volume on this than the last product. But we can see here that the price is so much different than it was back here at 30. It's all the way down to 21 or 20, you know, 22 about. So we can see that's a big change there. Hop out to the year chart and see that for the six months or so that this is out of buy box and everything like that, there's definitely some price instability in that it peaked in February over well over 30, 35. 31 back at 22 and we can see that you know for a while there it was, it was fairly stable with the offer counts and then the offer counts skyrocketed from five which it was five february 21 january 17th like very low so for two weeks there and then the offer count skyrocketed and subsequently the price dropped a lot um so there's not a lot of stability on this listing and you'd have to really get it cheap for me to go after it especially with all the competition on this listing, hopping into the buy box statistics over 30 days, we can see that this one guy, holy crap, he has quarter million reviews, so he's making tons of money. But there's a lot of uh, buy box share, um, especially for a bundle type item. And coming here, probably just not an opportunity I'd like to go out just because of the drastic rise in competition over the last month and the price instability. I don't love that. And I don't know why the camera, like, I don't know, maybe I had that initially wrong, but you guys get the idea. And then looking at a product that I think is a replenishable type opportunity, we have these sandals right here. I've never done any of these myself. They have no buy box, but that doesn't really scare me away because we can still see this. Uh, this history over time. We can see that on this one, the offer count is very stable. Additionally, uh, being that this is in like the shoe, clothing, goods, that that uh, that niche, there's a lot less sales tax potential for people to get this tax exempt. So there's a big advantage for people that are in tax exempt states. So that's why, partially why this might be a replenishable type opportunity. But just looking at the price stability, three months ago it was 38, right, 40, about right now it's 45, a little higher. 43, we can hop on the year chart and see that much more price stability over time, right? The lowest, it looks like it was about 38. The highest, I mean, it was over 50 for a little there, but the average of this probably comes to right around like 45. And I think we can actually even see this here in the uh, the Kiva. We can see 30 day average, yeah, 39. And then current, yes, yeah, so it's right around that. I guess we don't get the 365. I don't know, maybe we do, but either way, right? So we can see that the offer count, and this is all across a whole year, right? It doesn't vary as much in that there's always people selling it, so it's clear people are making money, but there's not that drastic drop to like five sellers or whatever, so people are clearly replenishing this stuff. This is also a gated category, so it's naturally gonna attract more serious sellers, uh, as long as, as well as with that sales tax. Um, stuff we had talked about, the situation there, the rank don't really matter, it's pretty low rank the whole year. is actually really low during the summer. It looks like people are vibing with the, the sandals, but uh, this is pretty profitable you know, year round at like a 24, buy cost or 22 21 something like that right even at the 37 exactly should be a little lower but target buy cost right around 20 or something like that there's also a bunch of variations um one tip i i want you guys to know for um finding what uh 
which variations sell the best on listings, you come in here and go to ratings and then you want to filter to the top and see that uh, this black size 8 is the best one. You can see it's getting pretty much all the black ones are getting the best rating and then you know the gray ones are getting a little love too but I would obviously go through all these on my own and everything like that but definitely the biggest takeaways I think is looking at the offer counts over time just seeing the competition being that this varied a lot less in terms of competition but also price the price varied even over a year it varied less over a year than that those other products did in just a three month period and they didn't go randomly from like six sellers to like 45 and something like that over time it like got close to 10 and now it's up right around 20 that's a healthy amount of you know stuff going on this listing we can see that people are clearly making money on that we can go to the buy box statistics uh we can see that you know pretty much everyone in this has a good amount of reviews i consider a good amount of reviews like over 40 or 50 that's the majority these guys dominating the buy box have tons of reviews and because i can see that they have tons of reviews and they bought been on it over time there's a good chance they're probably replenishing the product as well so i hope this helped guys this was a fun video to make kind of hopping on the screen chair talking through some different stuff with online arbitrage i really appreciate you guys watching make sure to subscribe below join our free discord uh you know check out their free roadmap if you're interested uh if you want to really help specifically tons of different sourcing methods um and all that but thanks a lot for watching make sure to subscribe below i will see you guys on friday for another video. Thanks a lot.